How's it going everybody? It's Tuesday, January 10th, and uh, I haven't made a news video in like a long, long time. I think the last one I made was like during Steven Bomb 3 or some shit. I remember Gravity Falls was still on TV the last time I made like a news video. And uh, I never really knew what I wanted to do with my news videos, so I'm trying to like do like a new kind of uh, format, try to see if that works out. But anyway, let me just dive right into it. The first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, Ultimate Spider-Man is finally coming to an end, and I have not been a fan of that show since its inception. And uh, I've not been a fan of that show since it came on. I'm not going to mince words. I honestly fucking hate Ultimate Spider-Man. <laughs> I can't stand that show. I've always freaking hated it. And it's such a shame, too, because the animation is so gorgeous that I really wanted that show to work. And I also like Drake Bell as Spider-Man. I thought he was actually pretty decent. But my biggest problem is that it's not really Spider-Man's show. It's just an ensemble of Marvel characters. Oh, look, Wolverine, Magneto. It's like I didn't watch a whole lot of the show. But I like Spider-Man for Spider-Man. I want to see Spider-Man do his thing. I don't want to see him like rip off Deadpool and talk to the camera or act like Zack Powers from Saved by the Bell and constantly talk to the audience. I want to see Spider-Man be Spider-Man. You know, that's why I like Spider-Man. Like he's an awesome character in and of himself and his stuff is cool enough to carry an entire show. You don't need all this other Marvel shit getting mixed into it. It feels like they wanted to make like the Young Avengers. But they took Spider-Man as... I've never read the Ultimate Spider-Man comics, so I don't know if this is, like, accurate. So maybe he does join S.H.I.E.L.D. or whatever. But I've always liked Spider-Man for his rogue gallery and just Spider-Man doing his thing. That's also a problem I have with the new Spider-Man movie coming out, Spider-Man Homecoming. But uh, I like the Spider-Man in that. Like, he seems like a pretty cool guy from what I saw in Civil War, so I'm hoping that the movie will be good. I mean, it seems like it's focusing on him versus the Vulture, so... And they also got a... Uh, I can't remember his name at the moment. I'll probably just put it on screen here. Uh, they probably they got a really good actor to be the Vulture too. I know it's the guy from uh, from Multiplicity, I believe. I don't know. I really should know that dude's name, but I don't. And I feel like a jackass for not knowing it. But I feel like that's gonna be a good movie. And it feels like it's gonna like it has like Tony Stark in there, so it kind of has that Avengers plug. But it's not all about that. So I'm hoping that maybe it's just I move my hands a lot when I do these things, even though no one can actually see me. Anyway, it's got Tony Stark in it, so there's there's your Avengers plug. But it seems like it's gonna focus mostly on Spider-Man. We don't know anything really. New Knew about about this new cartoon i've seen one little teaser that's on youtube that just shows like some web i don't even think it shows spider-man maybe like a glance at him we seem like i've seen some conceptual stuff of what he looks like he looks like you would expect spider-man to look like i don't really care what it looks like at the moment i just really want a good spider-man cartoon man i want a successor to spectacular that show was fucking awesome i know people are probably tired of people gushing over that show but it really was a good cartoon i want to see something like on that level i know it's like it's not fair to judge the new shows based on that level but i don't even want it to be just like just like spectacular i just want a good spider-man cartoon and ultimate ultimate was not it for me i hated that show so much it was like spider-man for people with adhd which i have but even i didn't like it it's just it was too all over the place and it just it didn't have a focus for me it felt like it felt like it should have been renamed the young avengers like it feels like that's what they were going for and it's just that's not what i was really into the tone was all over the place it was like it wasn't really all over the place, it was just too goofy for me and too jokey, and I just, I didn't think it was interesting, I thought it was boring. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I can't, I'd be lying if, I'm not, like, thrilled to see it get cancelled, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I was excited for the new cartoon and I don't really care that it's being cancelled. So, it's finally over, <laughs> you know, it's gone, I'm not gonna be a dick and be like, yeah, it's finally done, but, I mean, I, god, I'm looking forward to the new one, hopefully it's a lot better, and, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man's finally fucking over, thank god. <laughs> um... Also, the second thing I want to talk about was uh, Star vs. the Forces of Evil. I finally sat down and watched the second season of it, and I liked it a lot more than the first season. I never reviewed the first season on my channel. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I may have done like some videos and not uploaded them, but uh, I never really liked Star vs. the Forces of Evil. I'll just go ahead and admit that. Probably going to get a lot of downvotes, probably going to get a lot of hate for saying that, but I never liked the first season. I thought it was aimless, and I thought it was kind of boring. It was very formulaic. It was like, you know, girl goes to school, monsters attack, she uses her magic powers, whatever it happened every single episode and it got boring really really fast my biggest problem with this for the first season of the show was uh her powers were too overpowered she would just go like ah rainbow blast and just blow everything up and it's like all right so what was the point of that fight you could have ended it anytime you wanted to like what is the extent of your powers that was kind of my biggest problem but it feels like with season two to some extent they kind of felt the same way because season two kind of addresses all of my problems with the first season I feel like the animation was stepped up a notch. I feel like uh, the plots were a lot more intricate. There's a lot of stuff they do with like, they, they kind of hint at with like Star's family. I'm not gonna spoil anything. With Star's, there's one episode in particular where there's like these tapestry, tap, eh. 
There's this one episode in particular with like these tapestries being made inside Star's mind, which I thought was really fucking cool. Not only was it a visually cool thing, but like it also hints at some darker stuff with her family, which I thought was really, really cool. It seems like the show is heading in a much darker direction, which I kind of like. I don't need all my cartoons to be dark. It's just like, it, it seems a lot more interesting to me. And in season two, her wand gets fucked up because it got like blown up in the last step, last season. And it's like split between like an evil wand with Ludo and her. And that adds so many more layers to the show and makes it so much more interesting for me to watch personally. They actually made Ludo kind of a threat. I mean, he's still an idiot, but <laughs> they make him a threat. And he's got like this like killer spider and bird. It's really, really cool. I liked it. And now that her powers don't work properly, it makes fights more tense. It makes things a lot more interesting. Like most of the season is spent with her trying to fix the wand, which is really, really cool. And like, you know, like it seems like the darker her emotions are, I didn't fully understand like a lot of what was going on, but it seems like the darker her emotions are, like the more evil her magic becomes. Like she ends up making an evil cloud in one episode. It's interesting scene is I love this mixture of like really dark fucked up stuff and like the happy go lucky rainbow blast and narwhal and all this shit. It's really cool. So I enjoyed season two a lot more. There's one aspect of season two that I didn't like though, and it's probably gonna piss a lot of people off. But like, the one, it's really funny, it's like these two seasons are completely swapped. The one thing I gave the show credit for with the first season was the fact that they didn't force a romance between the two main characters, Marco and Star. I was like, cool, they're just like buzz, they eat nachos and watch TV shows and awesome. And then there was episodes like that Blood Moon Ball or whatever episode where it's like it kind of hints at it and I'm like, alright, don't, don't do that though please. <laughs> like, I mean, can we just, can they just be friends? And this season, heavily beats you over the head with like these two are I mean maybe they're not gonna get together but Star obviously likes Marco deep down somewhere and I'm just like oh why all right so like the, the kind of like gold standard for me mentally when it comes to like two best friends in a cartoon getting together is Kim Possible it did it fantastically for me I personally thought it was great it felt like a natural progression it was over the course of like what like three seasons in a movie three or four seasons i think it was three seasons in a movie before they got together it felt natural like these two were like friends from kindergarten it's like by the time that they finally got together you're like yeah you two are either going to get together or no that's really all the choice you guys have you guys are such close best friends at this point that it's like you're gonna get together there's no way you're not but in this it's only been like two seasons and it feels so forced and I just, I don't buy it. I'm just like, okay, you're, you're doing this whole thing. I see what you're doing. Like you're, you're giving the fans what they want. Obviously the fans of the show love these two being together. I get it, but it's just, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. It feels odd. I feel like, uh, and like, cause like Marco finally gets like Jackie Lynn Tom. Well, I guess that's kind of a spoiler. I'll probably put spoilers somewhere on the video. I don't know. Like right before this section, I'll put like a spoiler warning up. But like, uh, I mean, Marco, he doesn't really get her, but Marco and Jackie, they finally seem like they're kind of having a little relationship going on there. And you're like, you're happy for Marco. He's finally getting what he wants. You know, he's oh, he's always like this girl. And like that's starting to happen. So like Star gets more jealous, which I thought that was kind of interesting. But for the most part, it makes the story more interesting. So I don't have too much of a problem with it. But me personally, I thought they didn't really need together. It just kind of felt unnecessary. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I like season two a lot more than season one. I didn't review season one on purpose because I didn't want to piss anybody off. I mean, I see now that, fuck it, it's like, it's my fucking video. I can do whatever the hell I want. But, I mean, it's just my opinion. I'm not meaning to piss people off. It's just, that's my honest opinion. And I, I hated season one. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm not even going to mince words. I didn't like it. I thought it was fucking stupid. It was a lot of wasted potential. But with this season, it pretty much addresses every single problem I had with the first season. And I like a lot of the stuff they're doing with her family. And like, like there's one like portrait of her mom doing something to a character from the last season, like a main villain from the last season. We are like, holy shit, like, that's how that thing happened. And I really, really enjoyed that. I thought that was awesome. I like how I'm being like ambiguous now, even though I dropped the spoiler a minute ago. I feel like Marco and Jackie Lynn Thomas dating isn't that big of a spoiler. I'm not gonna spoil anything else, but I do like, I like a lot what they did with some of the characters too, like Glosseric. I hated Glosseric in the first season. Loved him in this one. He was so funny. He was a great teacher. He was so, in the first season, he was annoying. In this season, he's just like weird, but like wise. And I like him a lot. He's cool. And also what they did with her boyfriend. I can't remember. I think his name was Tom. I like Tom a lot too in this season. He does some shit. There's one episode where he places a curse on Marco. And Marco's like, what the fuck, dude? And he's like, yeah, sorry about that, man. I liked him a lot in this season. He's such a likable dude, even though he's kind of a douchebag. But yeah, that's all I gotta say about Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Really liking the direction the show is taken. I'm not sure where it is now. Not, I don't really follow the show all that much. I'm not sure where they are now. Are they on season two still? Are they going into season three? I'm not sure. Last episode I saw it was like Glosser going to like a magical council or something. So maybe the show's just on hiatus. I don't know. And the last thing I want to talk about, 
can't go a whole video without talking about some Steven Universe related. So my last video was like a whole thing about like, oh, there's a bunch of leaks and I'm talking about them. And, and since then, I've seen the full episodes. I may do some reviews on some of the episodes. I'm definitely not doing all of them. But the main thing I want to talk about was that apparently those episodes weren't leaked at all. Apparently it was all intentional by Cartoon Network, which I find kind of odd, honestly. I don't really get, like, they, they pretty much, they put the episodes on their Cartoon Network app, which I don't have, because I, I don't care. I watch them on TV, or sometimes the internet. Don't do that, because that's, like, bad or whatever, but I do it all the time. <laughs> but, but anyway, apparently they, like, put them on, I, want, I keep wanting to say leaked, but they didn't. They intentionally put the episodes on their app, and whoever, I guess someone downloaded them and put them on the internet, so now they're everywhere. But I don't understand the point of doing this. They put them on their app, like, at the beginning of this month, and the episodes premiere at the end of the month, so what the fuck was the point you know like what's the point of like having a set air date if you're just gonna put them on an app and release them early that kind of negates the point of putting them on tv i mean i'm happy to see the episodes early and they showed all the steven bomb at once it's like what's the point of even making an event what the fuck's the point of these steven bombs in the first place you know that's actually something i've never really talked about i personally don't like these steven bombs it was a cool idea at first, but now it's just starting to get on my nerves. Can we get back to a normal schedule where the show just shows every single week? What is with this Steven Bomb after Steven, like, Steven Bomb hiatus, Steven Bomb hiatus, like, that's, no, let's, can we stop doing that, please? It's really fucking annoying. I just want the show to be on. It's one of my favorite shows on television, and it's never fucking on. It's really, really irritating. I don't understand. Look, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I understand how like animation works or like uh, like the how the business works. I don't. I'm just some guy with a microphone. But to me, it just seems like it's a bad business move to just do Steven bombs constantly and then hiatuses. It feels like people just. I mean, there's there's the people who are like fans who are gonna watch no matter what, like my stupid ass. But other people like who are just like casual viewers of the show how are they supposed to get into it if the show is never on with new episodes if they never know what the fuck the schedule is it's like i like this show but i never know when new episodes are on and then like they kind of find it later and it's like it's like you're you're like i think your best views are probably going to be like when the episodes premiere but if nobody knows when the fuck the episodes premiere because you keep shaking up the schedule and doing steven bomb after steven bomb how the fuck are people supposed to find the show it just it i don't understand it it seems like cartoon Network is like intentionally trying to fuck the show over which i don't understand why they would do that it seems like it's one of their most popular shows if they marketed it right they could have like maximum views every single time if they just showed it like fucking normal i don't understand why they keep doing this it's so weird but yeah, Steven Bomb after Steven Bomb after Steven Bomb. I, I don't like this this setup. I've never liked it. I was like, if the first Steven Bomb happened, I was like, oh, cool, a whole week of new episodes. This is going to be fucking awesome. And then the second one happened, and it was like, okay, cool. And then the third, and then the hiatus has started. And it's like, can we stop doing this over and over? It was a cool novelty at first, but now it just kind of seems like bullshit. And, um,. I guess since after I've seen the episodes, I can kind of give like my broad ideas on the episodes. Yeah, I guess I can do it like like really really quickly. Um, the first episode, Steven's Dream, I liked that one a lot. I thought that was pretty cool after seeing like the full episode. I pretty much didn't miss much in my analysis. That's why like my my video where I just kind of like speculated because like I only saw like little bits and pieces. But after seeing all the episodes, I really didn't miss a lot. The only episode I really didn't see at all was like the zoo and uh, Adventures in Light Distortion, which Light Distortion wasn't super interesting. It was kind of cool seeing the gems come in and out of their body, which was kind of cool. That was kind of freaky. Uh, the zoo was just weird. I remember it just being like one big metaphor for like, uh, I think, gay relationships in general or just like any kind of relationship. Because like the whole thing was like, you can love whoever you want to love. It was just like, all right, I get what you're doing. I understand the metaphor, but you're like beating me over the head with it. I got it. <laughs> Move on. And then, like, um, like I said, Steven's Dream, which that was the first episode of premiered. I pretty much saw all of that one. That one was pretty cool. I like Blue Diamond a lot. Like, like, like a lot. Like a lot, a lot. <laughs> I love me some Blue Diamond. I like seeing her. I love how huge those women are. Like, it's crazy. But um, there's not really a whole lot to talk about. I still want to see Pink Diamond. I remember, um, I remember seeing some theory some guy had. Like, he was like, oh, White Diamond hates Pink Diamond. I remember thinking that while watching it. I was like, we've seen Pink. I mean, we've seen, uh, we've seen Yellow. We've seen Blue. We've seen both of them grieve. It seems like white diamonds like not even in the picture <laughs> like she just doesn't give a shit that's kind of like my prediction for her personality she's just like ah oh, fuck it fuck pink diamond i didn't like her anyway <laughs> which that would be, actually be kind of funny but uh yeah for the most part like uh i pretty much touched on everything i wanted to talk about those episodes uh the full episode we saw more of holly blue agate or whatever the hell that girl's name is i, I just keep calling her princess leia we saw a lot more of her, like, in the full episode. She's kind of an asshole. From the clips I saw, it seemed like they kind of, like, mistreated her. Like, oh, she didn't do anything that bad. But, like, after seeing, getting the full story, yeah, she's a total fuck. Yeah! 
<laughs> Excuse the language, but I can't think of anything better to call her. She's an asshole. So when she finally gets her come up, she's like, yeah, fuck her. She's she's a total douchebag. Uh, again, I love seeing the amethyst. I thought they were all fucking cool. I love that little red one. I can't remember what they called her. She was like a different kind of gemstone. She wasn't a, a amethyst or a, a a jasper. I don't know what the hell she was called, but I liked her. She was cool. I liked her design. Um, there's a lot of good, like, little funny moments. I don't want to sit here and just rattle off jokes, but, like, I like seeing, like, um, the part where they come out of the pod and they all have to play their roles. Like, uh, Sapphire has to play the diplomat and Ruby has to play, like, the soldier. I thought that was funny, especially Pearl the whole time. <laughs> there's one part where, like, uh, Sapphire says some kind of asshole stuff. She's like, I'm sorry. Like, that was really, really funny seeing them sneak in. I liked it a lot. It didn't answer a whole lot of questions, but we saw so much more that I can't really, like, the, like deep down inside of me, I'm like, I want to see more, but at the same time, they did like tell us a lot of information. We do get like a lot of new stuff, so I mean, it's fine. Um, I like the episodes for the most part. I thought they were pretty interesting. Love seeing the yellow diamond and blue diamond stuff. That was probably the most interesting of all of that. And like that musical number was cool too, just like showing a little bit more of depth to the yellow diamond. I remember I got a lot of comments on the last video. Well, not like a whole lot, but I got some comments in the last video saying like, yeah, but fuck the diamonds anyway. <laughs> um. I don't feel sympathetic towards them. I still think they're a bunch of douchebags, especially after seeing the full episodes. Like, they're they're assholes. But I do, I don't want to say I feel sorry for them, but I mean, one of their own did die. But at the same time, one of their own is maybe an asshole. We don't really know yet. But, uh, but yeah, I don't feel bad for them. They're still, like, at the end of the day, we're still talking about, like, Space Hitler, <laughs> basically here. I mean, they're, they're still assholes. They're still going to planets and just destroying the life there. Like, they're committing genocide on a mass scale. I don't feel bad for them, especially since their next target is Earth, just out of, like, spite. I don't feel bad for them, but at the same time, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's kind of sad the Pink Diamond died, I guess, but at the same time, she... That's another thing, there was a line in particular where uh, Pearl is, like, uh, kind of discussing, like, uh, Pink Diamond's zoo. Also, that's another thing before I get to that. It's pretty much confirmed at this point that Pearl is Pink Diamond's Pearl. It really, really seems like it. Like, they haven't said it, but there's a part in Steven's dream where it's, like, really heavily implied that she's Pink Diamond's Pearl. I mean, like, I know for a lot of, like, people who, like, speculate and make theories, like, oh, I figured that out back in season one. I know, like, people probably already know that. Like, uh, be patient with me. I'm slow. <laughs> but it seems like, like, I'm pretty sure. Like, I've always kind of suspected it because, like, it's kind of obvious, like, from the moment they showed that space suit she wore in Space Race, which I love that episode. In Space Race, the, with the pink diamond symbol on it, I always kind of figured she was Pink Diamond's Pearl. But at this point, it's like, it's pretty much confirmed she was Pink Diamond's Pearl. But anyway, she says something very specific along the lines of, like, the cruel animal zoo. And the way the, the, the animals, like, the human zoo, I said animal, I meant human zoo. The way the human zoo is set up, it does kind of seem like... She, she, uh, Pearl says something along the lines of Pink Diamond would claim them as trophies, so... Pink Diamond's probably an asshole. <laughs> in my original video when I talked about like the the, the, the the then leaks, I said that maybe she wasn't that bad. I'm starting to think that she was probably a full-on asshole. But anyway, this this whole segment's running a little long. Anyway, I thought the episodes are great. Like, even after seeing the full ones, like, it gives you some more insight. The Diamonds are actually assholes. Like, you really shouldn't feel sorry for them, but I kinda, sorta, don't do. I don't know. But anyway... That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. I just kind of want to get those topics out of the way. I don't know if I'm ever going to do another one of these, like, news videos, but I kind of felt, like, in the mood to talk about some certain topics. I wanted to talk about Spider-Man. I wanted to... I finally saw Star vs. the Force of the Evil, and I kind of wanted to discuss that a little bit. So that's kind of why I made the video. And, uh, of course, the whole thing with the, the intentional leaks, the, the not leaks. If the leaks aren't leaks, does that make them leaks? Like, I don't fucking know. It's so confusing. Just get on a normal goddamn schedule, please. I'm so sick of all these fucking, like, these weird schedules for these cartoons. It seems like every time I turn around, it's like something else is getting canceled or delayed or getting fucked by its network. Like, recently, Harvey Beaks was fucked over by its, uh, by Nickelodeon. It's like, and I like that show, too. I mean, it was, it was like a nice little cartoon for, like, kids, you know? Like, it was like, it was a great show. It really captured what it felt like to be a kid, at least, like, when I was a kid, anyway. But it seems like every time I turn around, something's either getting canceled or delayed. Like, where the fuck is the next season of, uh, Rick and Morty at? And where is Samurai Jack? Wasn't it supposed to come out in 2016? That's that's still not out. But Powerpuff Girls is though. You know, like they, they managed to get the Powerpuff Girls, the all important Powerpuff Girls reboot out though. <laughs> that's a that's a discussion for another fucking video. <laughs> I don't. Do, do I want to get on? I mean, like the video is probably running like really really long at this point. I don't even know if I really want to get into it because like, I mean, Powerpuff Girls is bad, but that leads into like a whole discussion about like all these stupid reboots on Cartoon Network in general. I mean, like, there's, like, Teen Titans Go. I mean, Be Cool Scooby-Doo wasn't that bad. Powerpuff Girls is just kind of ugh, painful to watch. 
and then oh my god then there's Ben 10 I don't I don't know what because like that's like a whole hour of I don't know it's like tell me if you guys want to hear me talk about that like maybe I'll do like like if you guys like this kind of thing maybe I'll do another one like next week where I'll talk about like another fucking hour of just bad reboots and sequels to things or something like that but whatever I can't talk about it now I mean like this this video is probably running like 30 like 30 20 minutes long at this point so yeah that's pretty much all I gotta say I hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching